Sorry, this is, I haven't made another video in a while. I just have it just postponed in Japan. So, no new manga, no new anime. So, basically, <laughs> things been on a plot. But this one's not about an anime. This is about a movie that just came, came out. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Solomon Adams. This is about the amazing Spider Man 2, you know. I mean, The Amazing Spider-Man is really one of the most best films. I mean, think about it. It's just a reboot of the original 2002 new Spider-Man series. It's on Tobey Maguire, Kirsten Dodd, James Franco, uh, William Dafoe. Even though the reboot who starts Andrew Garfield, Emma, uh, Emma Stone. I mean, everything is completely unique. I mean, I mean the reboot, uh, even though they, you know, they have improved, even though they are a little bit hey, good. I mean, you got to admit, you got to give credit who you favor, the original or the reboot. Yeah, but let me start at the beginning. I mean, you know, I mean, in this movie genre, you have uh, Scarker, you know, a.k.a. A Spider-Man. You know, he's doing his usual thing, being the web slinger in this movie. And you also, and you also have have his have his long time. Also have his, you know, uh, Gwen Stacy. You know, his girlfriend. But after what happened with the fallout of the last Spider-Man movie and movie, things have been on even between the two. So they're trying to see if they have a relationship, they deny that they don't have a relationship, but you get the usual picture. I mean, you get, I mean, I mean, after all, what happened, those of you who seen The, the Amazing Spider-Man, you know what I'm talking about. Those of you who don't, those of you who don't. But, but you gotta give it credit for that. And But there's also other instances in the movie. For example, Peter gets to see his old, his old, his old friend, Harry Osborn, and, and things are very condescending right now between them, because... Because uh, apparently Harry, uh, Harry just became leader of Oscorp after what happened with Doc Ock, with Doctor, you know, with Doctor Curtis Connors at the half and the death of his father Norman Osborn. Things have been things right now are so done, are so uneven. Because apparently Harry Osborn is dying. He doesn't want to answer like his dad. He said, and things are even a little uneven and between him and Peter. But things are starting. But things are to get even worse in this movie because you get. And Max Dillon, aka played by Jamie Foxx, who suddenly gets up into an electrical accident and becomes this electrical, the only ability to control electrical devices and electricity, aka Electro. This movie, he has both action, drama, and a bit funny. You know how Spider Man, he had always been goofy, you know, he was always funny, and he tried to make light of the situation. That's his personality. Yeah, and Andrew Garfield plays that to a T, like Tobey Maguire did with the original three, like the first Spider-Man movie. Hey, and and you gotta give this credit for that. And Spider-Man, even though he, oh he's a hero, he's also he, a man. I mean, he also has to make sure that he doesn't make any kind of mistake. That if he does, people's lives literally depend on me. I mean, and Spider-Man man is a good show, a good is a good movie and a good series. I mean, think. I mean, think about it. An average even a boy from Queens suddenly he goes to this lab and then he gets bit by this spider. And then he gains superhuman abilities. That's one of the ultimate superhero genre moments of any superhero series at all. I mean, especially for this guy. And you gotta give this credit for that. I mean, Stan Lee, Marvel Comics, they've been doing this for decades. I mean, and some people may be a little upset. For example, Gwen Stacy, who's the love of it, even till the last movie, he was. It was Mary Jane Watson, a.k.a. Uh, a.k.a. Kirsten Dunst. But, she, but Emma Watson is a love interest. The same thing... I mean, scratch that. Gwen Stacy is a love interest. The same as Mary Jane, Jane Watson. She first appeared in Marvel Comics in, 1950, in 1965. That would make her a... And that would make her a long-lasting character in the, in the world of Spider-Man. And going back that far, trust me, I did my digging. And she... I mean, and things are very, very unique between them, and, and you gotta admit, their relationship, even though here is a superhero and Gwen is a scientist, it's also, it's also a very stemming relationship when you are a woman. And comparing the Amazing Spider-Man reboot movies to the original, you gotta give it at least some credit. I mean, this, both movies, all, all, all five movies, they do entertain you, and when they keep giving you each moment. I mean, the first, the first Spider-Man movie and, and, the, and the Amazing Spider-Man, I mean, they... And they both started out kind of the same, but a little differently. A boy goes to a lab, and he gets bitten by a spider, and becomes a superhero, and gains amazing abilities. And, he said, and then there's the movies following that. And Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 3, where Spider-Man starts losing his power. He has to fight Dr. Octavius, Harry Osborn, um, and then there's Venom. And um, uh, with, and then there's Venom and everything, and then and then there's and the, the symbiote, and then there's the the reboot of Spider-Man. He, I mean, the first movie really fought was Curtis Connors, aka uh, aka the Lizard, and, and then there's this movie you get Electro, and you get Harry Osborn again.
Green Goblin. I gotta admit, Mick, comparing both movies is a little difficult for you. After all, the, the original Spider-Man movie were Marvel's biggest success. The first three grossed them over a hundred million dollars. That was until 2012 when the Avengers showed up and blew them whole all of the blew their money proportion out of water, making 250 to 500 million dollars opening weekend. That was a epic blockbuster because I was there for that. Trust me, I know. But I gotta give you gotta give movies credit. You gotta give these movies credit because they do entertain you. Those of you who haven't seen the Amazing Spider-Man 2, go watch it. Cause trust me. I am a avid fan. Trust me, it's an awesome movie. Even though there are a few surprises and shocking moments in the movie, I'm not gonna tell you what, but uh, but go see it because if you are if you don't see it, you're missing out on a good time. Also, not to mention the fact that if I were the best, which is the best super villain, super villain, I would choose between uh, the Green Goblin and Venom because the Green Goblin was a you know like Spider-Man has enhanced abilities, capabilities, weapon, and he ain't played to literally destroy and rip apart everything he has. Of course, there's also Venom, who's basically Spider-Man's literally dark half, the symbiote that bonds with Eddie Brock, aka Venom, Venom, who copied Spider-Man's DNA, cloned it, knows all his dirty little secrets, and like Norman Osborn ain't afraid to rip about anything, and he does have one advantage. He can disable Peter's spider sense. It doesn't register on him, because he was attached to him, literally duplicated his DNA. I got this. Which is the better Spider-Man? Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield? Your choice. Now, those of you who haven't seen The Amazing Spider-Man 2, I give it a thumbs up and a total a total 3 out of 5, because it's a good movie, trust me. Even though there are some moments where Spider-Man would man loses it, and there are some moments where Spider-Man has to make a choice, trust me, he makes the right one. And trust me, it's a good movie to watch. Hope you enjoyed that spot. And this is Solomon Gabriel through um, The Amazing Spider-Man. Hope you enjoyed that spot. Comment, subscribe. Signing off.